I'm going to only read one verse out of that out of that passage of chapter Isaiah chapter 57 verse number 15 For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. When you think about renewal, the whole idea of renewal in the church is predicated and hinges upon the fact that not all is well. Yeah. If we need renewal in the church, then that means we have to come to the admission that everything is not as it ought to be. Amen? Amen. If everything is as it should be, there would be no need for reform. There would be no need for renewal. Too many want to have renewal without ever understanding or admitting that something is wrong in their life. Amen. And now these sermons is not meant for you to gaze across the congregation and look across the pew to try to figure out what Brother Joe is doing wrong that he needs to straighten up. It's pretty obvious that uh, that Brother Bill needs to straighten up his life. But uh, I've got everything where it needs to be. But we're all as individuals going to have to come to the place that we can admit, I need to be a little closer to God and I want to be a little closer to the Lord today. Amen. We got many struggles in the church today. Financial crisis, uh, lack of personal commitment, lack of corporate commitment, leadership crisis, crisis in our faith, crisis in our doctrines, broken relationships in the church gives us an idea of the, uh, the, the dissolving of the church's unity. And I believe today unless the real issues are dealt with and unless the real hurts and questions and pains of the body are fully examined, Express and embrace there will be no renewal in the church because we all got to get honest as individuals before God today. Amen. Amen. Jesus would have never went for Jerusalem unless he knew that all was not well. He knew that there needed to be a renewal. He knew that there needed to be a revival. Illness cannot be treated and cared for and cured until it is first diagnosed. And God is free to heal us only when we acknowledge that we need His healing in our life. Amen. Now we're quick to admit that we need healing in our physical when we get sick and we feel bad and the body hurts and it pains. We're quick to call out upon God and say, hey, I need the healing but you see sometimes I, uh, the, the healing that we need in our spirit man is not as obvious and sometimes it's not as painful because we don't recognize it because we ignore it and sloth it off I, hallelujah we lay out a church for weeks and months at a time I, and the spirit of God is speaking to us and trying to draw us I, that we're losing our relationship with the Lord I, we're not praying like we used to pray we're not reading our Bible like we used to read it I, and we go every day and the spirit gives us these little notes of trying to touch us and trying to inspire us and trying to call us back but we ignore those but I tell you if it was like arthritis or if it was like the stomach virus or if it was like a toothache and it hurt I believe we would be ready to tell God there's something wrong in my life and I need a little bit of help a church if we're ever going to be revived if we're ever going to be renewed we're going to have to fall on the knees and say God all things are not right as they should be today I believe God's calling the church to renewal I believe he always has been and I believe in this day especially he's calling us to a renewal maybe such as we've never experienced it's not enough to applaud the past it's not enough to be so proud of our past we can't be so bound to the past that we cannot accept a fresh move of God today. I believe we must examine our past, but we must also review our present fulfillment of mission and determination and determine what story that we're going to write for the future. 
It would be a horrible tragedy, tragedy today to know that we lose forever the treasures that have been passed unto us over the years by godly men and women who didn't just come to church to be seen. They didn't come to church to preach a pretty sermon or sing a pretty song. They come that, he might, that they might touch the hem of his garment and that their family and children may be experienced of the hand of God in their life today. You see, if we'll own up to our own failures and our needs before a holy God, and if we'll submit to his holy refinement, then I believe that our church has a future and it is one of great hope and of bright promise today. The birthplace of all genuine spiritual renewal is in the presence of God's holiness and I believe that's why that we don't see much of a stir in our churches anymore. We don't see much renewal anymore. Thank God for some young people that God put on their heart to seek Him and they got hungry and they called out upon God and God began to send a renewal upon thee. But the only way that a genuine spiritual renewal comes uh, is when we get into the presence of God. It's not going to come through talent. It's not going to come through educated preaching. It's not going to come through big names in the pulpit. Uh, it's not going to come by denomination or big uh, high cliches in the community. Uh, but it's going to come through the power of the Spirit of the living God today. And until we have a view of the holiness of God, we have no idea what we're moving toward. You see, repentance and renewal is more than church growth. I don't want renewal just because I want our church to grow. And I believe if we'll have renewal, it will. But renewal is more than just church growth. It's more than just furious activity. It's more than just surface change and structure. It's more than moving a few things around and saying that we have revival. I've seen several churches that have altered the format of their worship services They've replaced the pulpit with a stool. They've eliminated Sunday school and children's church and they've called it renewal. But spiritual renewal can only be defined in terms of purity, pathos, and mission today. Renewal is costly. It will cost us something. We can't just pad the pews and put new carpet down and paint the walls and tell everybody, oh, we're active, we're doing something. But that's not what renewal is. A renewal is when God's spirit gets in our heart and we recognize Recognize how we need to be closer to God than we are today. And there needs to be a hunger for Him in our life. Amen. Chuck Swindoll said in comparing the remodeling of a, a renewal as the remodeling of a house. He said it takes longer than you planned. It costs more than you figured. It's messier than you anticipated. And it requires greater determination than you expected. That's what renewal is. Renewal costs you something. Yes, it will. Each one of us. And that cost may be different for you than it is for me. But none of us can, can experience spiritual renewal without a sacrifice. Amen. And I think maybe that might be some of the reason we see so little renewal today is because we live in a society that don't want to sacrifice and they don't see the need to sacrifice. I had one guy tell me one time when I was talking about suffering, how suffering and pain leads us to a closer relationship with God. It opens our eyes to certain situations, makes us more aware of things, and that sometimes we're allowed to go through suffering, and the hand of God, I believe, sees, and he allows it just like that he did Job. And this guy rebuked me, and he said, you ought to stop that silly stuff. The church is not supposed to suffer. If you're saved, you won't suffer. I said, call me in about two years and let me know how that works out for you. Yeah. Apparently, he hadn't read the Pauline epistles where Paul wrote to the church at Philippi and he said, you are called to suffer. Yeah. Yes. Jesus said, in this life, in this world, you will have tribulation. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. I tell you, if you stand for the right, you're going to find... Find all kinds of opposition. The enemy's going to come against you anytime that you try to do right today. But thank God, even though that Jesus said in the world you'll have tribulation, I, he said, but behold, I've overcome the world. I, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world today. So spiritual renewal comes only, I believe, from the Lord. 
One guy said a renewal movement don't bring something new in an absolute sense. On the contrary, it seeks to bring the church in line with the truth that is older than that by which it is presently living. It addresses unchanging truth to a changing time. It is a corrective, not a new norm. See, I believe that spiritual renewal is a dynamic happening. It ain't something you can pencil in that next week on, on uh, March the 19th, we're going to have spiritual renewal at Harrington Lake Church. Revival is going to fall. You can't book those things. You can't plan for those things. You can call an outside evangelist to come in and schedule a series of meetings from Sunday night through Wednesday night, and you can call it revival, but those things are not revival. We've been, we've been conditioned that if certain things happen, we just call it revival. If we get there, sister so-and-so gets excited and lets out a warpath holler, hallelujah to God. Uncle Joe runs down the aisle shouting and speaking in tongues. We call that revival. But revival is a reviving of something that is dead, something that is dying, something that's not as alive as it used to be. And that's what I'm calling and asking for God to give us a, to give us a resuscitation and bring us back to the life of church that we ought to be today. See, I believe renewal is a gift from God. It's a gift. And I believe that we ought to be readily to accept it. It's worth noting here that none of our historical spiritual awakenings happened because a bunch of ecclesiastical leaders, a bunch of pastors or, or church leaders got together and announced we're going to get busy and have a spiritual awakening. In all of church history of spiritual awakenings, you'll never find that to be the case. But on the contrary, spiritual awakenings are ushered in by simple people that get hungry for a move of God. They can't eat, they can't sleep, they can't rest. Something is itching down on the inner side of them. They can't be content until they experience that fresh, explosive move of the Spirit of God. There's a lot of folks that's content to go to church. They're content to go through the motions. They're content to learn a few Sunday school Bible lessons. But they have never got in touch with the triune God. They've never felt felt that hand lay heavy upon them uh, to touch them in the midnight hour. Uh, but I tell you, I've come too far to look back. Uh, I've come too far to fall back into that. Uh, I know what his touch feels like. Uh, I know what his presence feels like. Uh, and once you get a touch of it, you're addicted to it. And I'm trying to wake us up today. That's why we need one more time, church. We need a move of the Holy Ghost like we've not seen in a long time today. That it would wake us up as churches. That we're not competing for attendance with the church down the road. We're not competing for financial gain like the church down the road. We're not competing to build bigger buildings. But we're hungry for God just to touch us. Yes. Hungry for God just to touch us. You see, one of the dangers of religion is when we get renewed and we get on fire is that it will become dead and formalistic. Dead and formalistic. Think about it. Sadly to say, many times in the past, that is what happened. People got a move of God and they had revival. They had renewal. Then they become, their services become dead and formal. With no touch of God, formalism induces dullness in, in spiritual matters. It robs people of their passion for God and formalism brings a dullness that we can't experience His presence as we used to. It steals our passion and fervent devotion and deprives us of being God's people on earth because if you're not stirred up and if you're not renewed in your spirit and you're just going through the motion, we cannot be the people that God wants us to be yes. on earth. The flesh is too strong. And finally, formality and ritualism eventually lead to boredom. People get tired of coming to a, to a bored church. That's why we don't see as many young people in a lot of our churches anymore. It's because our, our older folks have got so tired and formal. We know what it's like to shout, and I'll shout when I want to. 
We know what it's like to praise the Lord, but I'll praise the Lord when I want to. Come on. And our young people see this and they're bored with this. I mean, our blood is getting a little thicker. It's getting a little slower. We're a little slower to get out of the bed of the mornings, huh? Yeah, yeah but you see, these guys, theirs is running at 220. I mean, they're ready to go all the time. And, uh, and spiritually, they're looking for something that's got some life to it. And church, our God's not dead. He's not an idol. He is not a, he's not a piece of furniture. He's not an idol that you put on the shelf. God, he always said the living God. He is a living God. He is alive today and he wants to be involved in our life. And he's looking for lively people. I, hallelujah to God today. John spoke. I, and he said, I baptize you with water to repentance. I, but he that comes after me, I baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I, and not with icicles. I, not with the snowstorm. He said he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God wants to put fire in the church one more time. Amen. Now I actually was going to preach a little laid back this morning. <laughs> but it's hard to try to preach laid back while at the same time ask the Lord to touch you today. Amen. But here's the problem. If we're dead and sick and tired as a church, we can never touch a world that is sick and tired. People go to bars on Friday night and they smoke dope and they shoot up trying to find a high. We got the high. Amen. We got the high. Amen. We become ashamed of it. Come on. We become ashamed of it. One old fellow, I remember he was a state police trooper to become a pastor. And uh, they asked him one time and about his shouting. And he got on his mind. He said one night he was in a church. A big old fellow too. Probably 250 pounds. And big old boy. Good preacher. Said he got to shouting one night. All of a sudden he shouted and just fell out in the spirit. Laying there in the forwards he come to. He said the devil jumped on his shoulder. He said don't you feel like a fool? Don't you feel like an idiot? Educated state trooper laying up here on the floor like an idiot. Don't you feel like a fool? And he laid there for a minute and he said, Devil, I wish the whole world could see what God can do. Hallelujah to God today. I tell you what, there is a lot of resistance against the move of the Spirit today. But I tell you, God created this world when the Spirit hovered upon the face of the waters and moved upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. It was the Holy Ghost that made sure there was light that took place. It was the Holy Spirit that came down upon Jesus when he was being baptized and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. But I tell you, in the last days, when the trumpet is sounded, it's going to be the same Holy Ghost that's going to transform these bodies that take us on to glory. You see, formalism was the chief sin against the children of Israel that become so mechanical in the religious ceremonies they forgot the original object of worship. We can be guilty of this, but you can go in a lot of churches and they have bulletins like we do. Ours is kind of just an in informative bulletin. But did it tell you what time service will start? Who's going to give the opening prayer? Who's going to take up the offering? Who is going to sing a song? Sometimes what song they're going to sing? Who's going to preach? Who's going to give the benediction? Who's going to sing the altar call all the way down? And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're willing to move if the Spirit moves. Amen. When I come in here as your pastor, I feel like that I have a control of the service, what God has informed me and led me to do. And, uh, and you know, I usually have the service lined out in my mind what I feel like that the Lord is going to do. And, but sometimes the Spirit moves and takes a different direction. I'm like, let's go with that. Yeah. It's better than my notes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got to be subject to that spirit. I don't want to become like Israel did and be so mechanical in our services. We forget what the original object of our worship is. God warns them through the prophet Jeremiah of their ingratitude in creating substitutes for God. Yeah. Now we do that. We create substitutes in place of God. We get a 
fantastic preacher up and we're so enamored with him or whatever that uh, that becomes an object to us. Or a singer that comes up that is so talented and we just love the way their voice rings. I won't get into that. Anyway, I was about to go fleshly there on you for a second. But I'll, I'll refrain from that. But Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 2. I was supposed to have that ready. Sorry. I hate for you to have to sit there while I stand up here 45 minutes. Let's see. <laughs> chapter 2, verse 11. That was what the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. Has a nation changed their gods, which are not gods? My people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. And be very desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. I want us to be careful today, and I want us as a church to seek for spiritual renewal. We will have corporate spiritual renewal when we have individual spiritual renewal. Yes. We minister in a world that's enamored by largeness and power. The theme song of the world today in many of our churches is give me that big time religion. Mm -hmm. People are influenced often not as much by the truth as they are super churches or charismatic personalities or a new wave gospel that has come through. And there's nothing wrong with change. We've got to be ready for change. But it's especially important at the time I believe that we're living in that we think seriously about the mission that God has called us to fulfill. He didn't call us and He didn't plant a church here back many years ago for it to come a place that we could just come together and have a good time and enjoy our religion. But God has created this place as a missionary point to send those that come into this place out into the world to be a witness for Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. But here's the funny thing about spiritual renewal. Ironically, new moves of God are usually rejected and sometimes opposed by those that were part of an earlier spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that? Well, the Roman Catholic Church held forth truths of God for centuries. But when Martin Luther came in with the Reformation, they fought against it and fought hard. The Lutherans were among some of the greatest opponents, opponents of the Wesleyan Revival. And out of the Wesleyan Revival came the Holiness Movement, which was rejected by the Methodist as a whole. From the Holiness Movement around the turn of the century came the modern day Pentecostal Movement. And who was among the greatest fighters against the Pentecostal movement? It was those from the holiness movement. God forbid that if he wants to send a move of the Spirit today just because we may not be acquainted with it, just because we may not see certain things about it, God help us to be ready for a move of God. Hallelujah to God. Our forefathers rejected anytime something new that God moved and wanted to do. Let us be ready today for whatever God wants to pour out onto the church. I want to be ready for that move of God today. Sometimes a new movement challenges and convicts us of our own ineptitude and ineffectiveness. That's why many times some of these formal renewals, and that's why sometimes many churches fight against renewal of just because it ain't their church or just because it ain't part of their team or whatever, is because they're not willing to admit their own ineffectiveness. I say it's time we all pull up to the plate. And be individually responsible. Yes. And do what God has called me to do and you to do. To bring renewal into our church. Yes. With this I'm going to close. Spiritual renewal causes us to face our own ineffectiveness. We know if we, affect, if we accept the challenge of spiritual renewal. We may have to radically change our life. And many of us are too comfortable mm -hmm. to change anything. Yeah, Huh? We're too comfortable to change anything. Too comfortable 
Too adjusted to a lifestyle that seems adequate, just enough adequate to keep us out of hell. I don't want to just stay out of hell. I'm hungry to touch him. When opportunities for renewal come our way, we either need to meet them head on with openness or we will walk away resisting the very thing that will bring us in contact with the real move of God. Will you stand with us today? Brother Mark's Sunday school lesson was kindly a preface to the message today. There must be preparation for spiritual renewal. Only God can send it, and we don't know what when God will send it. But if you'll, rene if you'll read of the Reformation of Hezekiah, Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became king. And immediately he had a hunger for God and began to re redo the resurface the the temple and, and pull down the altars and, and the groves of the idol gods and begin a renewal of the sanctuary of God. He was hungry for God. He began a renewal. And uh, they offered sacrifices. They prepared things. They sanctified the uh, tabernacle for, I, I forget how long that it was, that they went through this sanctifying process. They sanctified all the people. All the people had to, had to agree, we've got to sanctify our lives. We've got to stop doing some things and start doing other things. I've got to clean my mind. I've got to focus myself and become holy before the Lord. They did all that before the Reformation, before the renewal took place. So if we're going to respond positively to God's call of renewal, several things must happen. And I'm not going to tell them to you today. But it's coming. It's coming. But I want to leave you with this. We need spiritual renewal. Why? Because something's wrong. Yeah. I ain't telling you going to hell. I ain't telling you the biggest sinner in the world. I ain't telling you that you're doing things that's horrible. But I'm telling you if we need renewal, something's wrong. Yes. And I don't know about you. You may not be willing to admit it, but I'll be the first to admit it. I need renewal. I need renewal. I want to live in renewal. I don't want just a weekend renewal. I want to live in renewal. I want to get up every morning fresh and renewed. And if we're going to admit we need renewal, then we've got to admit I'm not where I need to be. Something's not right. Something's wrong. That's your first step. Yeah. No need of us going to step two until you recognize that. So I want to ask you today as they come to the music.